Hello, everyone, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, my name is Tyler Leeson, and I'm a scientist here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And I have a number of sci uh, scientific interests, but one of my true passions is our Earth's last dinosaur ecosystems. But before we talk about these last dinosaur ecosystems, I think it's important to understand just how long dinosaurs have been around for. They have dominated the planet for more than 180 million years. Uh, fun little factoid here is that there's more time separating T-Rex and Stegosaurus, you know, two dinosaurs that are often depicted together in movies like Jurassic Park or in children's books. There's more time separating them than there is time separating us and T-Rex. They completely dominated. And a story that some of you might be familiar with is that their dominance uh, came to a fiery demise 66 million years ago when a giant asteroid about eight miles wide uh, struck Earth off the, the Yucatan Peninsula. There was a number of, of contributing factors that, that uh, uh, led to this mass extinction, including aerosols that got blasted into the atmosphere. Um, the aerosols contributed to the acidification of the oceans that blocked out the sun. The impact created giant tsunamis um, in, in, in worldwide fires. Uh, this was all contributed towards the extinction of over 75% of species on Earth, including uh, the giant dinosaurs. This was the single worst day for multicellular life on Earth. Um, now, a story that you might not be familiar with is that right around the time that this asteroid struck Earth, on the other side of the globe, uh, India was traveling across the Indian Ocean and it moved over these uh, hot spots, which uh, created some of the world's largest volcanic eruptions in Earth's history. These are called the Deccan Traps. Uh, now, this is just a, a, a map showing the aerial extent of the, uh, of the Deccan Traps. Um, there are these series of uh, pulses or these volcanic eruptions that were occurring around the time that dinosaurs went extinct. Um, this is just a, a map or a picture showing what they looked like. Uh, they're over a mile thick and there's over 200,000 cubic uh, uh, miles of, of these volcanic basalts, of these, of these uh, pulses. So I always like to say that this is just the coolest interval of time because right at the end of the age of the dinosaurs, you have dinosaurs, you have giant volcanoes, and you have space rocks. Uh, I mean, it just doesn't get any better than this. But because of all of these things that were happening around the same time, there's been a lot, of a lot of debate as to what caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. Was it simply the asteroid that struck Earth that wiped everything out? Or did the Deccan and the release of climate modifying gases have an impact on these dinosaur ecosystems that weakened these ecosystems and contributed to the extinction of the dinosaurs? This has been one of the big scientific debates uh, uh, in vertebrate paleontology that's just raged for the last 40 years or so. Um, a lot of scientific papers have been written. A lot of ink has been spilt on this, on this question of what caused the extinction of the dinosaurs, asteroid, volcanoes, or both. Now, one of the challenges in addressing this question is when did the Deccan traps erupt? And how does that relate to the extinction of the dinosaurs? Uh, a lot of work has gone into this fascinating topic. And I'm only going to talk about two of the more recent papers uh, that were published. And uh, one is by Blair Shaney and colleagues uh, that published a paper where they dated the Deccan traps. So all these little, these little balls down here just represent when different uh, uh, eruptions occurred. And then the size of the ball is just the eruption of the volume. The larger the ball, the larger the, uh, the eruption, the more volume in the eruption. And here you can see there was a number of eruptions down here in the age of the dinosaurs. But then most importantly, they had a, he shows a major eruption just before the extinction of the dinosaurs, suggesting to he and his team that the Deccan traps likely played a role in the extinction of the dinosaurs. Case closed, right? 
Not so fast, because in the exact same issue of the journal Science, uh, Courtney Sprain and her team published another study show, dating the Deccan traps. And for the most part, their study agreed with the other study. You know, there's a lot of these smaller flows going on early on, early on in the Cretaceous or in the late Cretaceous, I should say. The most important difference is that this eruption here, the, the Paladper pulse, occurs just after the mass extinction, after the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary, suggesting to Courtney and her colleagues that it was uh, that the Deccan traps played no role in the mass extinction, and it was only the asteroid uh, impact that caused the extinction. So we're not quite there with this particular problem in the dating of the Deccan traps, but we're getting closer, and that's really exciting. Another challenge with addressing this uh, problem is are, the, are building up these detailed re fossil records from the last 1 million years of the age of the dinosaurs to see uh, if there were changes in these, these dinosaur ecosystems leading up to their eventual demise 66 million years ago. Was the extinction gradual and more protracted, which would suggest that Deccan played a role, or were there healthy ecosystems going all the way up to the end and then a very sudden catastrophic demise? which would suggest that it was the asteroid only that caused the, the mass extinction. Now, the best place in the world to look at dinosaur ecosystems just happens to be right here in North America. Here's a, a paleogeographic map of what North America would have looked like. Um, there, there was a seaway called the Western Interior Seaway that was uh, be receding off of the, the interior of the continent. Uh, and the seaway created a lot of great habitats for these dinosaurs to live in. And more importantly, it contributed to burying these dinosaurs, allowing paleontologists such as myself to find them uh, many years down the road. Now, some of the last dinosaur ecosystems include some of our favorite dinosaurs, like uh, Triceratops and Taurosaurus, the duckbill dinosaur and Montosaurus. Here's Anzu Wiley uh, the chicken from hell. Uh, and then of course, uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex or T-Rex here in the middle. And uh, I just happened to grow up in one of the best places in the world to understand this question of what happened to the dinosaurs. And that is uh, in the Hell Creek Formation. So here are the Hell Creek Formation Badlands, exposed in Montana and the D Dakotas uh, where I grew up. And in this area, you have dinosaurs um, going all the way up to a literal line in the sand, that Cretaceous Paleogene boundary, um, which marks the end of the age of the dinosaurs. So the age of the dinosaurs below that line, the age of the mammals above that line. So here you can go and build up these detailed biotic records to figure out were these ecosystems changing at the end of the Cretaceous. And that's, this is something that I've been doing basically my whole life. I grew up in a small town in southwestern North Dakota called uh, Marmoth, and I've been looking for fossils since I was a small child. And here's a picture of me next to a dinosaur that I found uh, when I was in about, uh, I think, sixth grade or so. And over the years, my teams and I have uh, uncovered hundreds of dinosaurs. Here's a, a nasal horn of a triceratops sticking out of the hill. Here's what it looked like after we excavated it and brought it back to the museum a couple of years ago. We've collected parts of duckbill dinosaurs. Here's part of a T-Rex, a, uh, a nice little claw from a T-Rex. Um, We've collected dinosaurs that go all the way up to the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary. So you have, there in red, you can see that's the boundary. And then there, the little white blob, that is a dinosaur that we collected. That was a mere five centimeters below the boundary. Um, and here you can see that what the bone was underneath that little white uh, protective plaster jacket was a jawbone from a horned dinosaur, most likely Triceratops. Um, and this is just a map of my field area, and you can see all these little black dots represents a dinosaur skeleton that me and my teams have, uh, have mapped in over a three state area, Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota. And then more importantly, we're able to map these in time. So uh, here on the Y axis, you can see time. You can see we have roughly the last 1 million years of the age of the dinosaurs. All these little dots is a dinosaur skeleton. The different colors represent a different type of dinosaur. And basically, all you have to do is look at the bottom to see that there was a lot 
of different types of dinosaurs, similar to the middle, similar to the top, all of which suggests that there wasn't a whole lot of change in these dinosaur ecosystems at the bottom compared to the top. It was pretty much the same during the last 1 million years of the age of the dinosaurs. These data also are supported by other studies that have been conducted in my field area. Um, a study by Dean Pearson, who looked at the small microvertebrate fossils, showed that diversity at the bottom of the Hell Creek was basically the same as the top of the Hell Creek. So this is just the number of species down here. Diversity stays the, the, same, the same. There's not a protracted extinction. Same with the plants. This is a study that was largely done by uh, Kirk Johnson, and he showed, looked at the uh, leaf fossils and showed that the diversity at the bottom of the Hell Creek was similar to the middle and similar to the top. And then there was a catastrophic demise at the very, very end. All of these data suggest that it was an asteroid as the primary mechanism for causing the extinction of the dinosaurs. Now, is, uh, th is that it? Is that case closed? Um, I think not. I think this will be a question that scientists will continue to address, uh, you know, continue to build up more and more data sets. And I think this debate and this fight will, will continue on. Um, thank you. Awesome presentation and awesome picture there. I love this graphic. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> it's just me, memory popping up like I always do to ask your questions to um, our presenter today, to Dr. Tyler Lyson, and we have them rolling in, Tyler. So let's Great. just get going. So we have one. Uh, well, I'll say this comment too. We have a comment from Lim, Lynn. She says she loves these talks. We do too. We love the Dino talks. <laughs> right. They're um, fun to give. Yes. <laughs> Mina asks, did Plesiosaurus swim in the Western Interior Seaway? What about fin whales? Yeah, so what about uh, Plesiosaurus? Yes, the Plesiosaurus and other um, marine reptiles were swimming in that Western Interior Seaway uh, before the, you know, the extinction of the dinosaurs. So things like uh, Mosasaurs. Um, and so they were all around and they also go extinct when dinosaurs go extinct 66 million years ago. Uh, whales don't come onto the scene until much later. So of course, whales are mammals. We're living in the age of the mammals. So they appear in the Cenozoic era rather than the Mesozoic era. All right, and we got another question from Doug who asks, oh no, I'm sorry. He was just replying to Mina as well. He just added, no whales. Um, the WIS dried out tens of millions of years before the first whales even appeared. So basically yep. what you just, what you just, on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I will give people just a little bit more time to leave any questions. I know there's a little, um, a little lag between our video and yours. So we'll just give people maybe another minute before um, we close Oh, Here we got one right here from Gina. She asked, was Colorado in that interior seaway? I've heard we used to have a seabed here. Absolutely, Regina, you're absolutely right. So about 75 you know, million years ago, Colorado would have been underwater. And then you go you know, a little bit later, 68, uh, 70 million years ago, Colorado would have been beachfront property. Um, you know, as that western interior slowly receded northward and sort of was draining off of the interior of North America. So, and, and then, and then right here in Colorado, we actually have some of the Earth's last dinosaur ecosystems. You know, here in Colorado, we found T. Rex, uh, Torosaurus, Triceratops. So, some of all these same dinosaurs that I was just talking about have been found here in Colorado, and they're another one of these last dinosaur ecosystems. Yeah, we have that really great, um, what you were just saying made me think about it, that series of paintings um, at the museum. I believe it's coming out of Prehistoric Journey um, or maybe Exhibition right. Health. Yeah, and it shows just Denver, how it looked over billions of years. And yeah, you're right, it looked just like perfect beachfront property at one point in time. So very different than what we have now. Very, very much so, yeah. Yes. I am not seeing any more questions. I see Sarah left a comment that says, thank you, Dr. Ty Dr. Lyson. So definitely thank you for coming and talking with us today. So yeah, if you have any yeah. other questions, 
feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll shoot them over to, to Tyler to answer for us. So I usually like to ask all the presenters one question myself. Um, and that, you know, what can we, um, what's one fact that we can take with us on into our weekends that we can tell our friends to make us look super smart? Um, because this is one fact that I know about dinosaurs and I need to share it with you. What is one piece that we can, <laughs> that we can share with others? Well, I always, I always tell my, my daughter the, this one fact, and that is that dinosaurs went extinct 66.021 million years ago. Okay. Not just 65, not just 66. Okay. 6.021. Zero two one. Perfect. I am definitely going to be using that one. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Lyson. And thank you all for joining us. We'll see you again next Thursday.